What's up guys, Spin Firearms here, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite handguns in the world. And easily one of the most versatile, in my opinion, the most versatile handgun in the world, the Glock 27. Now I know you're going to say, oh that's not a Glock 27, it's got a bunch of aftermarket parts. Yes, it does. This is a build right here. I enjoy creating stuff. I enjoy building to my liking. doesn't matter if the handgun comes completely stock, I have a bunch of them stock. But I also have a bunch that I like to change things out on and make sure they still run reliably. But the Glock 27. An amazing handgun that came out around 1994, 1995. Has unlimited time, years, rounds, and so on through it. Unlimited. In 30 years, for a handgun that a lot of people still carry, lots of people who watch this channel carried it 5 years, still carry it 10 years, 15 years. The same exact handgun, and they said never had an issue. It's one of the most tested handguns in the world at this point that is still relevant and can still, um, you know, work with larger magazines and so on now the glock 27 isn't necessarily the most popular out of the baby glocks it actually is the glock 26 but what's interesting about this glock right here is it can be multiple glocks not only can the glock 27 be converted to 22 long rifle with a kit i believe it's made by avalanche arms and i actually plan on ordering one soon to test and review for the channel because that's a great way to use the same exact platform handgun for instance if your glock 27 or your 26 or your 33 or 28 is your main carry why not use the same exact feel of a handgun, same exact ergonomics, and use 22 long rifle? It's a cheap way to train, you know, drawing and getting a shot off. Obviously, recoil isn't going to be there. Um, it's going to be much different. But just the fact drawing, you know, shooting up close, stuff like that, that is an awesome, cheap way to train, especially with inflation, the price of everything right now, and so on. Um, that's a great way to train. What also is amazing about the 27 is, even though it's a little thick, it is very, very small. In its original form, sitting at 9 plus 1 of 40, being that long, it is a relatively small handgun. Some people pocket carry it, they tell me. I don't pocket carry it, but I have before, and you can do it depending on the pants, and that's definitely dependent on the pants because it is a little thicker. But it comes with a nice 3.4 inch barrel, so somewhere between a micro 9 and a, and a compact size barrel, so you know, pretty much a sweet spot for comfortability as well as velocity. But where this thing really shines is the fact it can take all larger aftermarket mags and great i just realized my baby probably spit up on me that's embarrassing anyways um like i said this is in 40 so not only can you do 22 long rifle but it can shoot 40 which is one of the best rounds out there in my opinion i carry a lot of 40s a lot of glock 27s mmp 40 c's 40 shields hkp 2000 v3s and 40 and i absolutely love them i think it's a very versatile round what makes it so versatile is if you pick the right ammo 200 grain hard cast, get some Federal or some Underwood, Buffalo Bore, whatever the case may be, you can shoot it out of your 40 in the woods, and that will defend against almost anything in this country. Now, bears, you know, you want to go with 10 millimeter and, you know, 44 Magnum, 357 Magnum, stuff like that, but if all you had was the Glock 27, you could really defend yourself if you wanted to. Now, on top of that, you can shoot 357 SIG out of here. And what is 357 SIG? In my opinion, is the best defensive round that will not possibly over penetrate. That's just my opinion. 357 SIG is a 9mm projectile with a 40 casing, basically, just a little bit less powder, I believe. But the round is unbelievable, especially out of shorter barreled firearms. Now, 10mm is such a great round, you know, they call it a one shot stopper, stuff like that. But over penetration is always a factor with 10 millimeter. 40 is a sweet spot. 357 SIG has to be one of the best defensive rounds to carry, right? And you can do that. How do you do that? Obviously, this firearm is cleared and safety checked. But you would take this barrel right here. And I don't recommend this barrel. I just want to put that out there. Get a bar stow. Get a KKM Precision. Get a Storm Lake. This is just one of my um, Lone Wolf barrels. It's a conversion barrel that I got. And since you have that 40 slide, you put this in, and you for 357 SIG, you don't even have to change out your ejector. You don't. You don't have to change out your extractor, nothing, because it uses the exact same size casing. So you're good. You just need this barrel. You now have a Glock 33. Now, if you want a Glock 36, take this right here, which is a great barrel. I definitely recommend this barrel. Now, what you'll notice is a lot of high-end barrels stick with the stainless steel. So when you see designs that look similar like this, they tend to be good quality barrels. 
always check the brand name and stuff like that. But these companies like Barstow, KKM Precision, Storm Lake, Alpha Shooting Sports, they all do a very similar, you know, it's like a matte stainless here, a shiny stainless there, and they all are just unbelievable barrels. All these barrels are equal on my playing field. Um, I think the KKM Precision might be a little bit better, but um, all awesome barrels, just if you're ever shopping around for a barrel. But Storm Lake, this has been an awesome, awesome conversion barrel. I've ran thousands of rounds through this of nine millimeter out of a glock 27 not this one but a different one and this barrel has been great i mean it's been an absolute awesome barrel the fact that it runs another caliber so um reliably is unbelievable and the way that works is if you look at the width of barrels um obviously you see how thick those are but the hole is smaller with a 40 it's going to be a bigger hole but smaller walls all this does is add some width to the barrel so it fits the front hole on your slide and you know shrinks that bore down to nine millimeter or you know in 357 sig being a nine millimeter projectile so you now have 357 sig nine millimeter 40 and 22 long rifle let's talk about magazine options now for 10 mil for the 22 long rifle i think there's only two magazine options maybe three you have the 10 rounder which is meant for these and then i think you have a 15 rounder for the glock 19 but you can still run those because these run larger glock mags so this right here can take a Glock 23 mag, a Glock 22 mag, the extremely long, I think 24 round Glock um, mags that are chambered in 40. Then same thing for nine millimeter, you can do the 10 round mags in there, 12, 15, 17, 19. I think they make a 21, a 24, a 31, and a 33. Unlimited barrel options with this. And then 357 SIG, basically all the capacities are gonna be the same as 40, but in 357 SIG. So you have the most popular magazines ever to be made, which are polymer Glock mags, in double stack, which are the 940 and 357 SIG, nine millimeter being the most popular, then 40, then 357 SIG. You get all those magazine options. If you go to any firearm store right now, I don't care where it is, I don't care where you are, you can find a Glock mag that fits this. Whether it's a 9mm, a Glock 19 mag, a Glock 23 mag, a Glock 32 mag, you can find a magazine for this handgun anywhere. doesn't matter where it is. It's the most popular magazines. The internals. Like I said, you just change a couple parts out in a barrel and you're good to go with other calibers. It literally takes you two minutes and you can shoot whatever you want reliably. Now, whenever you're changing out internals, replace it with the correct OEM internal. Do not use an aftermarket brand for internals. Barrels are fine because Glock doesn't release conversion barrels, but stick to the higher end. Don't get Lone Wolf. I have had issues with this one, but my Barstow, my Storm Lake, my Barstow in 357 SIG, my Storm Lake in 9 um, have just ran flawlessly. They've just been the greatest barrels. Do not get that Lone Wolf one though. That's just from my experience. I think KKM Precision at least has been great. Now, the one thing I do want to point out with a Glock 27, it is a Glock chambered in 40. So if you do get one, I do recommend changing out to a fully supported chamber. Depending on the ammunition you run and stuff like that, or if you reload, whatever the case may be, you want a fully supported chamber. And the only Glock pistols, the only caliber where they do not run a fully supported chamber on the barrel is with 40. And it makes no sense. So I do swap over to the KKM Precision Barrels or Barstow. They're all fully supported chambers, even though they are in 40. And this handgun right here is one of the most versatile, reliable, underrated, you know, spoken on when it shouldn't be, you know, handguns in the world. There's so many years to this handgun, um, you know, so many trials with this thing, and you never hear of issues with 26s, 27. You, you just don't hear of issues. They just run, and they're there when you need them to be, and that makes this handgun one of the most versatile handguns in the world. Parts kits. Oh, yeah, internals. What I was going to talk about. If crap hits the fan, I know right now I have 10 parts kits upstairs that will work for my 26s, my 27s, uh, my 19s, all sorts of stuff, right? Because they're basically interchangeable 80% or whatever from these to the compact to the full size. About 80%. That is huge if crap ever hits the fan. If things ever go south, being able to allow your firearm to work as long as possible with that ammo stockpile... It's probably one of the best things you could have. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. The Glock 27 is the most versatile. Thanks for watching.